Okay, today we're going to discuss uh, other parameters that we perform in the hematology laboratory. So we have here your hematocrit determination. We have also here the blood indices. We have also here the um, erythrocyte sedimentation rate. And we have your osmotic fragility test. So first one, we have here your hematocrit determination. So hematocrit determination, or simply your packed red cell volume or pack cell volume, is primarily obtained here by centrifugation of your blood. So as you try to centrifuge your blood, like if you try to put that one in your capillary tube, it will able to form here a packed RBC and just uh, obtain the percentage of this PRBC against the total volume of the blood that eventually become your hematocrit. Okay, so we have here the term parallax. So parallax here is being applied when we are reading the result of your hematocrit with your hematocrit reader. So parallax here is just seeing a different orientation of your object as to try to change the position of your head. So like for example, if you are reading this one, kung ito ang ating PRBC, okay, so pag nag-read tayo niyan, kung tinitilt natin ang head natin or ibang position ng head natin, you are going to have here a different reading. Okay, you call that one as your parallax. Okay, we have here the normal values for our hematocrit. So, anyway, your hematocrit value here closely parallel the result of your hemoglobin. Although, when we speak about hematocrit that represent here the PRBC or the number of the RBC, this one is not used as a parameter for diagnosing someone to have an anemia. So, ginagamit natin na most likely correlated with the degree of your anemia is the hemoglobin concentration rather than your hematocrit. So we have here the normal values for your hematocrit for the meal, the 42 to 52 percent. Okay, that's, you could also convert that one to your liter per liter. You just need to uh, move that one into decimal places. That gives you 0.42 or 0.52. For the female naman, so we have here 37 to 47% or that equivalent to your point, uh, 37 to 0.47 liter per liter. Okay, now we go to the different method here for our hematocrit determination. So we have here the manual method for your hematocrit determination. First, we have here your mic micro. Microhematocrit method is with the use of your capillary tubes. So our capillary tube is simply your capillet. Capillet ang tawag dyan. So that one could have here, okay, could have here the red band. So or, pag sinabing red band, so may guhit dito. So it could be red, okay, and could also be blue na band na color. For the red band na microhematocrit, or a capillary tube that one contain the hematoc contain the anticoagulant na heparin so it's being anticoagulated meron siyang anticoagulant or they call it one as your heparinized tube the blue band on the other hand wala siyang anticoagulant wala siyang heparin so it's anticoagulant free na capillary tube so natin ginagamit ang ating red band na capillary tube or the blue band so like um since your red band na capillary tube contains the anticoagulant, so dapat ang source ng blood natin ay walang anticoagulant. So, mean to say, you can use this one na may heparinized, heparinized na capillary tube if you are collecting the blood coming from your skin puncture. So, skin puncture or, okay, so that basically do not have an anticoagulant. Walang anticoagulant ang ating a blood directly from your skin puncture, and therefore, ang ating capillary tube should contain here the anticoagulant to maintain the normal anticoagulant blood ratio. On the other hand, how about your blue band? Your blue band, wala siyang anticoagulant. So, dapat ang ating source ng blood is your anticoagulated blood. So, like, your ETA collected na blood, 
So, like, if you wanted to perform the manual method of your hematocrit determination with your capillary troop, and that the source of the blood is your ETA collected blood, so dapat ang gagamitin mo is your capillary troop na blue band. Why are we doing that one? That's to prevent the over anticoagulation. Remember that when we are collecting the blood, dapat kapag may anticoagulant yan, we need to maintain the the normal anticoagulant blood ratio. Since for the red band, siya ay may anticoagulant, ang blood natin na coming from your skin, walang anticoagulant para hindi siya mag-over-over anticoagulation. Remember na may effect ang ating over anticoagulation with the morphology of your RBC. Therefore, that's why we are okay, doing that one na pag ang source ng blood natin ay walang anticoagulant like in the skin puncture, dapat ang ating capillary troop ay may anticoagulant. On the other hand, the blue band, so since na ang ating blood is uh, anticoagulated blood coming from your EDTA, then dapat ito ay walang anticoagulant. So you should use here the blue band na capillary troop. That's to prevent over anticoagulation. Hindi pwede na may ang source ng blood mo may anticoagulant tapos ang, ang ating capillary troop may anticoagulant din. So Anticoagulant, anticoagulant, over anticoagulation ang mangyayari. Okay, then we have here the description of our capillary tube. Approximately, that's 75 mm long. And that's 1.2 to 2.4 mm wide. It can hold approximately 0.05 ml the blood or that's your 50 ul microliter. Okay, so when we are sealing here, so when we're collecting the blood, then we prepare this one for centrifugation. We need to seal here one end. Pag nag-seal tayo ng one end, try to seal here the end na walang, na wala doon ang ating band or mark. Okay, usually kung dito ang band na mark natin, okay, so dito ka mag-seal on the other end. So dito ka din mag-feel ng blood from the skin puncture. Okay, so although wala naman siyang effect kung saan kang direction, but that's the proper that's a proper collection procedure. Maybe it's because na okay to allow you to know kung ano ang klase ng capillary tube natin ang ginamit mo. Because pag dito ka nag-seal, kung nandun ang band na makikita, so pag nag-seal ka dito, matatakpan na ito ng clay. Hindi mo na makikita. Okay, so with that. Okay, we have here the procedure for your microhematocrit method. So just need to perform here the skin puncture. Or you can also uh, obtain the blood coming from your ETA collected the blood. Just need to fill approximately two-thirds of the entire hematocrit troop. Make sure na hindi siya ganun ka, kapuno. Kasi pag nag-seal tayo, pag puno ito, ang, ang blood mo, for example, you try to fill this one with your blood hanggang dito sa taas. Pag nag-seal tayo, so mag-overflow ito. Pag nag-overflow siya, you don't know here kung ano magiging effect like baka. Since we are, when we are measuring the hematocrit level here, so that's directed with the percentage of your PRBC. So baka, pag nag-overflow siya because of sobrang dami nang nilagay mo na blood and try to seal that one with a clay, so baka ang lumabas ay mga red cell component natin, not more than the plasma or not with the plasma, something like that. It might affect the result. So, trick for it lang para pag nag-seal tayo, hindi siya ganun ka umaapaw. Okay, then after that one, you try to seal here one end of the clay. Or sometimes, aside from the clay, pwede mo siya i-seal din ng ating uh, wax. You could have your candle. Okay, seal mo siya lalo para hindi siya mag-wash off. When you perform here, your centrifugation. Then after that one, you try to put that one in your centrifuge tube. Our hematocrit na centrifuge, so parang ganun siya, may mga ganyan. Okay, so para dito, dito na dito natin nilalagay ang ating hematocrit. Okay, so paano ang proper positioning here ng hematocrit natin? So dapat kung saan ang sealed end niya, dito mo siya. Okay, that should be positioned away from the center. Not on the other way around. Hindi pa na dito ang sealed end niya because pag nag-centrifuge tayo, mawawash off ito. 
So therefore, you need to position in such a way that the sealed end here should be away from the center. And dapat balance. Okay, just like when we are doing the centrifugation of our whole blood with our centrifuge. Okay, so we have here the required centrifugation time, that's 10,000 to 15,000 RCF. That's your G-force, G-X, okay, for five minutes. Then after centrifugation, so try to read this one with our hematocrit reader. So parang ganito ang ating hematocrit reader, so parang ganun siya. Okay, tapos meron dito, okay, so meron dito sa gitna. Ano pa ba? Um... Tapos may mark dito. Okay, so may mark siya dito. Zero na mark, sa 100 na mark. Okay, so you try to position here your hematocrit, microhematocrit, which has already settled. Okay, so after centrifugation, it would separate here the component of blood into your PRBC here at the lower portion. Then we have here, in between, we have here the Buffy coat. The Buffy code here contains your WBC and your platelets. Then the upper portion, the liquid portion, that's your uh, plasma or your serum. Pag may anticoagulant siya, so that's your plasma. Pag walang anticoagulant, then you call that one your serum sample. Okay, then kung itong pinaka-upper portion, ay, kung itong pinaka-upper portion ng plasma natin, you need to position this one. Okay, pwede mo kasi itong igalaw. So like kung dito ang may lagayin dito sa gitna, pwede mo ito igalaw, so pwede mo i-move. Okay, first one, ang pinaka-sealed end mo, okay, itong pinaka-lower portion ng PRBC, then itong clay mo, so dito ka slightly above the clay, because it's not part, do not include the clay, because this one is not already part of your uh, PRBC. So position mo zero mark here dito sa, ganyan. Okay, above your clay and slightly below here, the lower portion of your PRBC. Then, the 100 mark is dapat position mo dito sa pinaka upper portion ng ating plasma. Then, dito sa gitna, pwede mo itong i-move. I-move mo ito. Ang, ito, yung parang ganito. Parang ganito siya. So, pwede mo siyang i-move, ganyan. Okay, try to find here. Okay, dito na part. Okay, that become your reading. So, dito ay may mga, may mga ano dito. Ayan. So, dito yung mark natin like 1%, 2%, 3%. Para ma-read natin, it will allow us to know kung ano ang percentage ng hematocrit natin. Okay, you read here. Okay, below the buffy coat, do not include the buffy coat. So, just read, position this one, the mark dito, above your the upper portion of the PRBC and should be slightly below your Buffy code. And do not include the Buffy code here when you are reading it. Okay, then try to read dito. So this become here the percentage of your hematocrit. Okay, then we have here the quality control with your micro hematocrit method. So since we are collecting two capillary through, you need to compare the result. So, the allowable difference between the two capillary tube reading here should be not more than 1%. Not more than 1 plus or minus 1%. So, like if, for example, here, if the one capillary tube would have 40%, the other dapat na sa 41 or, or 39% lang. So, if, for example, here, the difference between the two is more than 1 plus or minus 1%, so that would signify that there, there's an error with your collection process. Paano magiging error? Like for example here, uh, most likely the error pag nag skin puncture tayo is nahirapan ka mag-collect for the second na capillary tube. It's because here na sobrang babaw ng tusok natin. So ginagawa natin for that to, in order for us to collect two capillary tube is that we tend to squeeze, we tend to squeeze much of the skin in order for you to form a drop of the blood. And then, yari noon, what you are collecting is not, uh, what you are collecting here most likely are mga, is the interstitial fluid na not the entire or not really the blood. And therefore, nagiging uh, diluted ang second na sample natin. And therefore, for that, 
if the difference here is more than plus or minus 1%, then you need to repeat your collection process. Another method here for hematocrit termination, we have your macro hematocrit method. So we have here the Winthrop through the Hayden, so itong mga anticoagulant nila. For the Winthrop, we have here your DO or your double oxalate. Your Hayden's, we have your 1.1% sodium oxalate. Van Allen's, we have your 1.6% sodium oxalate. Sanford and Magath, we have your 1.3% sodium oxalate. And could also have your brace method uh, with the use of your heparin as your anticoagulant with your blood sample. Okay, so this is your Winthrop troop. Okay, your Winthrop troop here would have your dalawang marks on the left side. This one is colored red, ang kanyang markings. That is being um, calibrated here with the mark 0 on the top and we have here 10 on the bottom area. So each of this one, may mga smaller graduation pa dito. In each of this one, still in between 0 to 1, meron pa siyang mga 10 na smaller graduations. So, each of this one, equivalent to your one, mga smaller na calibration or na mark here, equivalent to your one millimeter, one mm. So, from, zero, from your zero to one, so that's equivalent to your 10 mm. So, this entire zero to one to 10 na mark dito that gives you 10 times 10, so that's 100 mm. Okay, this area here is primarily for the ESR determination. On the other hand, the white na marking on the right side, on your right side, on my right side, in your right side. Okay, the white na marking here would be labeled here as 10 on the upper portion and we have your 0 on the bottom portion. And then again, still ganun pa din siya, each of this in between of your bigger graduation mark, there are 10 smaller graduation marks that gives you also a 100 mm. Okay, procedure for this one, you just need to fill your Winthrop tube here. So, medyo maliit ang Winthrop tube natin. Hindi ganito palaki as what is uh, reflected in my drawing. So, medyo sobrang liit nito, ang butas nito. So, that's a challenge when we are filling this one with your blood. Okay, then try to make sure here that the upper portion is nasa dito na mark. And then try to send a this one at 3,500 RCF for 30 minutes. Then after certification, we separate pa din ang ating PRBC, ang ating uh, Bafico here with your uh, plasma. Okay, then the matter right here is being obtained as okay, the height or the the height or the millimeter of your PRBC over the total. Volume here to this equivalent, usually always 100 dito sa taas kasi ay sa baba, I mean, because you try to fill this one up to this mark naman eh. Then multiply by 100, that gives you here the percentage of your hematocrit. Okay, another method here for your hematocrit determination would be by means of your automated instrument. Automated instrument would measure your hematocrit termination by derivation. You try to derive the value of your hematocrit based on the MCV or the mean corpuscular volume, the value multiplied by the RBC count. That's how your automated instrument uh, compute for your hematocrit. Okay, we have here the sources of the error when we are doing here the hematocrit termination. The first one, improper sealing of the troops. So, improper sealing of the troop here during centrifugation would result to washing out or leaking out of your blood from your capillary troop. Or worse, ma-wash off talaga lahat. Okay, so therefore, nagdi-decrease ang hematocrit natin because they try to leak out kasi hindi na properly sealed ang one end of your capillary troop. But most likely kasi pag nag-wash off siya uh, entirely, the entire capillary troop talaga nag-wash off. So that would mean that you still, again, recollect your sample for that. Another one, over anticoagulation, that's your short draw. Meaning to say, kulang ang blood na na-fill natin with our uh, required na volume ng blood. So kung, for example, itong EDTA, tapos dito ang mark, dito ka lang, kulang ang blood na na-fill natin sa ating EDTA tube. Okay, that's results to your over anticoagulation. 
And therefore, the result here sa the string gauge of the RBC, liliit ang mga RBC natin. Pag lumit ang RBC natin, so bababa ang ating degree of packing. And therefore, decreasing also your hematocrit concentration. Another one, sufficient time. So like dapat sa microhematocrit natin, you need to send a future one for, let's say, 10,000, 15,000 G-force for 5 minutes. Ikaw, since nagmamadali ka, sinentrifuge mo siya for 1 minute lang. Okay, sa anong mangyayari? Pag insufficient ang time, hindi pa niya na-reach na ang maximum degree of packing and therefore, medyo nasa taas pa siya. So, dapat, dito ang degree of packing niya, so dapat after required time, sa so bababa pa siya. Because, ang sa'yo naman, kulang ang time, so dito pa siya taas. And therefore, increasing your hematocrit termination. How about here, over centrifugation? Pag over centrifugation naman, wala siya effect. I mean to say, pag na-reach niya, niya ang maximum degree of packing, hindi na siya bababa. Not unless, na sobrang init na ng centrifuge natin, sobrang tagal, so ang mangyari, maglalize ang ating RBC. Pag nag-rupture ang RBC natin, so wala ka ng degree of packing. And that's result here for the decrease hematocrit. Pero pag... Hindi naman, like, wala hindi naman siya nag-lice, wala siyang effect. If na-reach na na ang degree of packing, ganun pa din. That's the true na value pa rin ng hematocrit ang maa-attain natin. Another one, reading here, including the Buffy code, that's why Buffy code here always dapat hindi siya include sa ating hematocrit reading. If you try to include the Buffy code here, of course, that would have increased ang ating hematocrit reading. Okay, another one, Hematocrit termination immediately after the blood loss. Okay, so immediately after the blood loss, your body try to compensate for your RBC or blood cells which has been lost by producing much of your interstitial na fluid. So hindi pa nag-activate immediately ang ating bone marrow for you to uh, produce your, your as a replacement for those mga blood cells which has been lost. Mas mauna, ma-activate ang ating okay, interstitial fluid na distribution. So, since interstitial fluid ito, so we are expecting na madidilute ang ating circulation. And therefore, you have here decreased ang ating hematocrit na result. Another one, the presence of your trap, trap plasma. Your trap, the trap plasma here, so yung pasabing trap plasma, ang ating plasma na the trap sa ating RBC. So, like, for example, ko ito ang ating RBC. Okay, tapos may mga trap plasma ka dito. So, ang mangyari ay mag-slightly increase ang ating uh, PRBC because of the presence of your trap na plasma. Your trap plasma can be found here in the condition like your sickle cell anemia, your uh, macrocytic RBC, hypochromic, and we have also here thalassemia, and we have also your ferrocytes. And that would tend to increase your hematocrit reading here or degree of the packing by 3% as compared with your with your automated na instrument. Uh, manual method lang affected natin kasi di ba when we are measuring the manual method, so manually, may measure natin kung saan nakikita natin ang degree of the packing. But then again, pag automated instrument, walang pakialam si automated instrument if you have here the degree of the packing or the presence of your trap plasma. Because remember here, na dinidrive lang naman ng ating automated na instrument ang kanyang value. And therefore, the trap plasma will not be affecting here our automated instrument with our hematocrit determination. Another one, improper specimen collection. You try to collect the specimen like in the IV line. Okay, so in the IV line, so pag na contaminate ng, in, ng IV fluids ng ating blood, it will be diluting your blood. And therefore, it will decrease also here the degree of the packing kasi di ba, we tend to measure your hematocrit as a percentage of your PRBC compared with the total volume of the blood. So pag na-dilute ito, so therefore, it would have you decrease ang ating degree of the packing. Or, again, there's another problem here when we are collecting the specimen with your skin puncture. So, sobrang hirapan, nahirapan ka mag-squeeze. Kaya nga dapat medyo mas malalim ang ating tusok dapat. Bahala na masakta ang patient. Basta, you were able to collect the blood. Diba? Kesa naman, ikaw mahirapan sa pag-squeeze. At the same time, it will not allow you to collect here. Appropriate na, na um, filling up the two capillary tube. 
up to the three fourth or the two third volume. And therefore, contaminating with the interstitial fluid here would also try to decrease the results of your hematocrit. Okay, then we have also here the rule of the three. Rule of the three is basically used here in our hematology as a quality control program. So, this is only applicable pag normal ang ating RBC. Pero pag may mga sakit ang patient natin, this one will not be applicable. So, what's the rule of three? So, it's just parang dinidirive lang natin in order for us then to assess kung ang nakukuha nating result with our testing is um, more or less accurate siya or hindi. So, we have here RBC count multiplied by 3, that's your hemoglobin concentration. Then, whatever the level of your hemoglobin multiplied by 3, that become the concentration of your hematocrit plus or minus 3%. Okay, for example, okay, hemoglobin concentration of patient natin, 12 grams per dl. So, again, hemoglobin times 3, okay, 12 times 3 equals 36% plus or minus 3. So, plus 3, 36 plus 3 is 39, and 36 plus minus 3 is 33. So, dapat ang hematocrit natin ay between 39 to 33%. Pero dito ang result naman 36. Meaning to say, tama. Meaning to say, the patient is normal. On the other hand, so, pag normal, cytic, normal, chromic ang patient natin, normal, applicable ang ating rule of 3. How about here? So, case number 2, yung hemoglobin is 9 grams per dl, hematocrit is 32%. So, hemoglobin times 3, 9 times 3, that's 27, plus 3, that's 30%, minus 3, that's your 24%. So, dapat, in-expect natin, ang hematocrit natin value is between 24 to 30%. Pero, ang result niya ay 32. So, medyo mataas. Yung to say, Mababa ang ating, so how are we going to interpret this one? Based on this one, ang hematocrit natin mataas compared with your hemoglobin concentration. So for this one, ano gagawin natin? You make a smear and try to examine the morphology or the IBC under the microscope. So makikita mo ano, anong magiging reason for that? Bakit mababa ang hemoglobin compared with the hematocrit? It might be because may mga Ang, pre, ang ating mga RBC are, are hypochromic. So, makikita mo dyan mga pale staining ang ating mga RBC under the microscope. So, that would explain kung bakit ganito ang result niya. So, again, so, mean to say hypochromic ang patient natin, so that would signify na hindi siya normal and therefore, hindi applicable ang rule of three. Another one, the problem we have here, okay, 15 grams per DL for hemoglobin, hematocrit is 36 grams per cent. So, let ang rule of 3, hemoglobin times 3, 15 times 3, that's 45, plus 3, that's your 48%, minus 3 is for 42, 42%. So, we are expecting na dapat ang hematocrit na 42% to 48%, pero dito 36. Mean to say, mababa ang hematocrit natin compared to your hemoglobin. Mataas ang hemoglobin level ng patient natin compared to the hematocrit na value. So, you need to check your sample for that because maybe there's problem with your hemoglobin determination na method with our cyan meth na hemoglobin method. Remember that your cyan meth hemoglobin method, ang pinaka-interference niyan because we tend to measure that uh, parameter by spectrophotometry would be the turbid na sample. So, pag turbidity ng sample, it might increase your hemoglobin concentration and that would explain kung bakit mataas ang hemoglobin value dito compared with your hematocrit. 